Ladies and gentlemen, what the evidence in this case is going to show you is that this defendant zipped Jorge George Torres, shot in a suitcase. She was able to do this because at the time of his death, he only weighed 103 pounds. And she did this with the malicious intent to punish him. And then she went up to sleep and left him to take his final breaths on this earth alone. George Torres is dead because in this defendant's judgment, he deserved it. Sarah Boone will take the stand. She will explain what happened. She will explain why it happened. The evidence will show that she was justified in the action she took to prevent the attack from George Torres. Now self-defense, you know, we talked about it in jury selection, usually a gun, some deadly weapon. The suitcase in this case was a physical restraint or a blocking of an attack, but it was unconventional. Self-defense nonetheless. Back on February uh, 23rd, uh, 2020, um, did you have an occasion uh, to talk to your brother on that day? Yes, sir. In the background of that conversation on the evening of February 23rd, 2020, what did you hear? Um, Sarah's in the background uh, yelling. What was she yelling about? Something about choking or how he choked her. I really don't. How would you describe uh, the walls that separated your units? Thin, like very thin walls. Uh, would you ever have occasion to hear uh, arguing and yelling coming from Sarah, Sarah Boone and George Torres's apartment. Yeah. How often would you hear this? Almost daily. Do you recall the evening of February 23rd, 2020? I, I do, yeah. There was a very, very loud noise that I heard that was loud and powerful enough to shake my bedroom wall. I remember that because I was sitting on my bed on FaceTime with my girlfriend at the time, and I literally felt the wall shake and stop me mid-conversation. At a certain point in the evening, did you hear <coughs> a loud crashing sound? Yeah, probably around 10, 30, 11 o'clock that evening. So I could hear something start above me super loud and then fall away from me at, like at, like it was falling down the stairs. Literally, I remember me and my roommate talking the next day about like we could literally like it shook both of our rooms. Did you perform the autopsy? Yes. And what were your findings as to cause and manner of death? So the cause of death, um, which I put on the death certificate, is positional asphyxia with environmental suffocation. And the manner of death was, I classified as homicide. What information were you provided at the time? So the information that I had was that the decedent was with uh, his girlfriend. And um, at some point in time in the night, he got into a suitcase, which was then zippered shut. Um, at another point at time, I believe she went to bed. Um, and then um, the next morning, discovered that he was still in the suitcase. And I think that was in about an 11 hour time frame from the information that I had. Do you know the volume of room air contained in that suitcase? No. Do you know how porous the fabric of that suitcase was? No. 
Did you run any tests on the suitcase? No. Were you aware that this, the suitcase, the, the lock on it or the zipper on it was broken? The pull handles were broken? Yes, I didn't know that. Do you agree if, if there is a portion of the zipper that's open that air can travel in and out of that space? Yes. Fair to the jury to say that there were no broken bones? There were no broken bones. And it would be fair to say that the blunt force injuries on his body that the jury has seen here today had, did not contribute to the cause of his death? Not likely. Do you recognize that as the item that you collected from the scene that you went to on February 23rd, 2020, and then later examined? Yes. What is it that you did with that item while you were on scene? I was requested to come out. I was informed from the detectives that um, the user of the device gave consent for us to download her phone. Um, so I responded out, and um, once I located the phone, I immediately started to um, extract uh, extract the data from, from the phone. Turning down to 17167, what's the content of that text message? And bless you and all of you too, I'll get rid of him. And then at entry 31107, a video that ends up being captured as IMG underscore 1062 dot MOV. For everything you've done to me. For everything you've done to me. Fuck you. Fuck Stupid. Fuck This is my name. The word on. Fuck I can't breathe. That's on you. Fuck I can't breathe. That's on you. Fuck Fair to say that y'all were intoxicated? Yes. Tell the jury what happened. Um, at one point, I guess he knew that I couldn't come up with anything else, um, tapped me on my knee and said, you're it. So from there, I ran up the stairs and hid into um, our shower, um, just waiting for him to find me. I decided that I need to go to sleep. I'm picking my son up the next day and we need to start wrapping up the evening. Um, and I went downstairs to find where he was. I saw, I looked over and I saw him settling himself in the suitcase. Did he willingly get in the suitcase? He was already in there. Okay, when you got to him, did he see you? Yes. All right, tell us what happened. Um, I, I mean, I just kind of, I zipped him up. We thought it was funny. And um, we're joking about how he was, I guess, small enough to fit inside of the suitcase. And what was he saying or doing when you were zipping him up? <clears throat> I just thought it was funny. The suitcase had, um, for me moving it around, had flopped, was flopped over. So while it was like that, I thought at that point, I had a moment to I guess take the time to talk to him while I guess he was not able to get out for a moment. Um, that's when I, I went over and decided to um, videotape for him to understand that right now I feel safe and right now I have the ability to actually speak to you. Um, in a manner that normally I would not have the ability to. It got very heated very quickly and he continued to push on the suitcase. And um, my fear was that he was going to break out of the suitcase knowing that it was a broken suitcase. His hand started to come through, his, his hand started to come through this way. And so I shook the suitcase, I shook the suitcase trying to get his hand to go back in, shaking it and telling him that, please stop doing this. Please, please stop doing this to me. Please stop doing this to me. Were you in fear? Always. If he would have gotten out of the suitcase, what would he have done to you? Like he used to tell me, he probably would have made me unrecognizable or I would have uh, lost my life. Okay, was he getting out of the suitcase? He very much was trying, yes. And so what did you do? The split second reaction that I had, I happened to see that and I grabbed the baseball bat and 
was trying to poke his hand to go back in to please don't go, don't break through, please. So I hit his hand. There was no more of him trying to break through the suitcase. So I felt safe enough to turn it back over. Did you believe that he could breathe in there? Yes. Did you ever believe he could die in there? No, at all. Were you trying to kill him? Never. Did you want to kill him? I did not. Sarah Moon, you said that uh, when he was in the suitcase, he was threatening her, threatening you. Can you tell the jury what he was saying? That he was going to end me. That's what made me ask him please to stop doing what he's doing to me, that he was going to, I'm guessing, try his best that night to probably take my life. Do you remember waking up the next morning? Yes. When I went downstairs, it was very quiet. So I had the understanding, I believed that he had left. Where else did you look for him? Um, I looked on the back porch. Um, I went through the front door um, to see if my car was there, thinking maybe he had taken my car. Um, I checked the bathroom, and when I was checking the bathroom, I saw the suitcase, and I remember about the night prior, I immediately unzipped the, I immediately unzipped the suitcase and I was screaming, George, 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 and I was shaking him, I was shaking him. And I pulled him out and I stretched him out flat. And then I began instantly trying to do CPR and then was trying to look for a pulse or a breath or just anything. And, um, just screaming his name over and over and over again and come on George come on George and I continued CPR continued CPR and I continued CPR and um, he was gurgling and what color was he what color was he yes he was purple was a backup deputy for a call involving a male kicking a female in the face, so it was, it came out as a domestic call. While having contact with Ms. Boone, were you able to observe any injuries? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She had swelling and bruising in her right eye. And, ma'am, were you able to make contact with uh, Mr. George Torres? Yes, sir. Were you able to notice any injuries on his person? Yes, sir. I had red markings and some abrasions around his neck. Ma'am, at a certain point in time, uh, did you place Ms. Boone under arrest? Yes, sir, I detained her and placed her in my vehicle. Ma'am, at that time, do you recall or remember Ms. Boone asking you, why am I in trouble? Yes, sir. Did you respond to her? Yes, sir. After that, ma'am, do you remember Ms. Boone asking you why? Because I fought back. Yes, sir. Back on August the 28th of 2019, how were you employed? I was a deputy in Uniform Patrol Division in Sector 2. As a part of your job duties that day, did you have the occasion to respond to 4748 France Lane, number 3? Yes. Uh, what was the purpose? Uh, there ended up being a battery call. On that date, did you observe any injuries on Sarah Boone? Uh, I observed redness on the left side of her neck and what to be an old injury to her right eye. Did you notice any injuries on Mr. Torres? Yes, he had some redness on it by his left eye. Sir, on that day, was Mr. Torres placed under arrest? Yes. Is it fair to say that Mr. Torres had quite a few marks on him? Uh, from my report, I remember marking the left by redness by his left eye. Did Mr. Torres refuse to say what happened that day? He did. Ma'am, I'm, I'm going to show you what has been marked as uh, identification defense exhibit 8A. And you recognize that uh, video or that CD of the video? Yes. Well, I think we kind of prepped you on it ahead of time. Uh, that was extracted from uh, the Sarah Boone phone that you were asked to extract. 
Yes, one of, one of the um, media files, yes. You're gonna help me take this out. Real You're gonna help me take it out. You're gonna help me take this out. Was there an incident when you saw Ms. Boone with a black eye? Yes. You testified that you saw Ms. Boone on occasion with bruises, other injuries, and a black eye. Is that correct? Is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, and was there any pattern to what you observed in regards to those injuries and uh, bruises that you observed on Ms. Boone? One time I seen with a black eye and like she had been choked one time. Do you believe that Sarah Boone uh, does have some narcissistic traits? I do. Can she does she doesn't qualify or meet the criteria for that diagnosis, does she? I did not diagnose her with that. Did you diagnose uh, Sarah Boone with anything? Yes, so post-traumatic stress disorder. It's my opinion at the time of the offense, she had depression and she had an alcohol use disorder. Is your opinion that she was suffering from battered spouse syndrome at the time of that event? Yes, she had the patterns ingrained in her behavior that would be typical of a victim who's responding to traumatic events in a predictable way. opinion was that um, she did not give me um, enough information to diagnose her with post-traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her at the jail. My expected answers from the doctor based on a very brief conversation yesterday and this morning was that if I asked her whether or not PTSD or BSS had anything to do uh, with this particular uh, case that her answer would be it doesn't matter because of what she stated happened. I believe it's a discovery violation because I should have been notified that there was going to be a change in opinions here today. And we had an agreement that I was going to be allowed to retake the deposition and not be ambushed in the middle of the trial. Do you believe that she, Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Uh, she may meet the criteria for that. May. So. It's possible? Is, yes. that, is that your opinion? Yes. Definitively, you can't say? Um, she, there's a history of her having that, yes. So you agree she suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Yeah. But my question to you specifically is, is there anything in the text messages that stuck out to you that caused you to pause and feel like that that may have some impact on your evaluations? Correct. And Am you I agree your answer is no? As I said, it made me aware. That's not my complete answer. Okay, well, let's talk. Let, first, you said no. As I said, it made me aware that they had a volatile relationship. It's not my complete answer. I know, Dr. Warner, but didn't you say no to me? That was your first sentence was no. It's not my complete answer. I understand. I'm going to let you answer that. But when I asked you if there was anything in the text messages that caused you to pause and it would in some way affect the impact on your evaluation, your answer to me was no. It's not my complete I understand, but was your answer not to me no? Yes, but that is not All right. right. Now, I've been ambushed by a new opinion that I was not made aware of by any kind of report. I was not notified by Dr. Warner. I was not notified by the state attorney, William J. I first heard about the opinion when she testified to it and I objected to it, relating to imminent threat, the ultimate issue of fact. I move for a total dismissal for prosecutorial misconduct. Denied. Would you agree that Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? I Do you agree that the DSM, I think you have it there with you? Yes. Directs that, that the clinician should consider post-traumatic stress disorder if there was exposure to extreme stress. Do you agree with that? 
Yes. Everything that you just talked about with Mr. Owens, does that change your opinion uh, about whether or not battered spouse syndrome is applicable to the facts as Ms. Boone relayed them to you about this incident? No, not at all. Even if somebody meets the criteria for battered spouse syndrome, does that mean every action they take against their intimate partner is justified? Correct. That's not, that's not, that, they wouldn't be equal. So even if you do have battered spouse syndrome, even if you are in an intimately violent relationship, that doesn't necessarily mean any action you take against your partner is, is justified. That's correct. Sarah Boone does not have the burden of proving that she was justified in using deadly force. Instead, for you to find Sarah Boone guilty, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Sarah Boone was not justified in using deadly force. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Battered spouse is not some carte blanche. Battered spouse is not a license to kill. The fact that George Torres at points mistreated Sarah Boone, did things that were worthy enough to get him arrested, to get restraining orders placed upon him, doesn't mean that she walks around with an ace in her pocket when it comes to George Torres. It doesn't mean that because he did these awful bad things that now through the rest of time she's a battered spouse and she just has the right to kill him or to make him suffer or to punish him or to make him feel uncomfortable or decide that he needs to be confined to a box. Ladies and gentlemen, are we so sure that George Torres wasn't the person suffering from battered spouse syndrome? You can hear how loud George's voice is on the 11-12 video. But now, roughly 11 minutes later, from the time that that started, you see that the makeshift coffin that he's in has been moved. And his voice now is softer. The life is draining from George Torres. And it's evident in that video. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is evidence that there was no threat in the magic nine minutes that was not recorded. There was only George Torres in this box, slowly being killed. In the circuit court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit and in Fort Orange County, Florida, case number 2020 CF2603, the state of Florida versus Sarah Boone. Verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder in the second degree as charged in the information. So say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, on this 25th day of October 2024, the form has been signed by the courts. Madam Clerk, please poll our jury. Jury seat number one, is this your true and correct verdict? 
Yes, it is. Juror seat number two, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, it is. Juror seat number three, is this your true yes, and correct verdict? Juror seat number four, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror seat number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror seat number six, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, ma'am.